Hi everyone and welcome to both the audiences that are on the webinar joining us virtually today and the small audience that is just in front of me here at the SportWorks headquarters. My name is Olya Abasala Avchinnikova and it is my pleasure to host for the first time a webinar with my SportWorks friends. You may have seen me in my workout gear during the SportWorks Fit series that we ran during the time of the pandemic and the time of lockdown. So now I am on the other side here uh, hosting a webinar. And today's talk is the first of the active series hosted by SportWorks. So it is about running the most accessible sport in the world. Like in any other sport in running, there are different styles. So it's not that one is better than another, and I'm taking the words from you because uh, you are the expert here, but each of them has a set of advantages and disadvantages. So today, Hélène Mest from Un Mouvement will share with us the most common ways people run and tell us why identifying your own running style will help optimize performance and reduce the risk of injuries. So I will give you a quick introduction and then I will hand it over to you. If you have any questions for Helen, please feel free to put them in the chat if you're joining us online. But also I have the small audience in front of me that can raise your hands as well. So we'll have a Q&A after uh, the presentation. So Helen Mest is a physiotherapist and physical trainer at MMA, a multidisciplinary center dedicated to sports and artistic performance right here in Lausanne. And then has a Master of Science and a Bachelor of Science degree in Physiotherapy. And then specializes in running. And her work led her to the Swiss Olympic Medical Center in Macau, <laughs> if I pronounce that correctly. Yes. So, over to you. Thank you for the introduction, Alia. And thank you for the invitation, SportsWorks. Um, I'm glad to be here and to speak a bit about the running and uh, running preferences. So, Thank you, Chris. So today we will see that uh, there are different kind of running style. Um, so you will maybe know at the end that you need to know um, how you run. Okay. Thank you. So some of you may be uh, run for the pleasure and Olia just told me that she's running for the first time a marathon on on the on fall maybe some of you uh, run for a very long time some of you run uh, maybe just don't run yet are not running yet but what brings us together today is our interest in running and that's that's great so Thank you for the video, Pascal. Olia, maybe we'll jump back into yeah. the screen. Do you see differences between this runner? I'm going to take a look here. I'm, uh, I see, I think one on the left is, is that you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I do see differences. Um, I can't tell you technically what they are, I just okay. see that they run differently. Okay. Um, do you see maybe, where do you see differences? Maybe on the knee, on the arm? On yeah, the, the arm's arm. movement is very different and uh, the stride size, I guess, just want some of them look more, a bit more efficient. Efficient? Okay. How much energy they're using? Mm -hmm. Can you play again? Please? Um, yes, please. Do you think they are one best running? Maybe mine? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I was going to say that uh, maybe the person on the right looks like uh, he's the most professional. Okay. Well, you too, because I know that you're <laughs> <laughs> so I'm biased by that. Okay. Okay. You, we, we will see after that no one have the best uh, running technique. Uh, each one are, are great. Um, it's good because I look more like the person in the middle and I thought that was doing the wrong thing. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you will see that, that no one is best. Um, okay, so at, um, uh, we created a, a poll in En Mouvement that is called the Renault Solution to 
that intend to answer all the questions about uh, for the runner. And uh, the goal is to understand how you run, to progress, and to perform. Okay, so we have different options. Uh, we propose running analysis, uh, running plan, runner specific strength plan, and uh, weekly training group. And that's all that the runner needs. So for the beginning, we use a running analysis that uh, first uh, we have a small assessment that is small talk. So if you come to the center, we are just talking what are your running habits, uh, what are your objectives, uh, what, what uh, do you want to do, and uh, things like this. And then we will uh, pro yes, exactly. And then we will do your assessment, that movement assessment that you see my colleague is doing some exercises, and I will just I will check how he moves, how you move, what are your your habits, what are your strengths, your difficulties. Exactly. And then I will create a report on base on the basis of how I see you move and on the on the running on your running uh, strike. For to analyze your running strike, I will, we will use uh, some devices that we put directly on your on your shoes, and that will allow us to analyze 16 parameters like you know uh, foot strike, um, uh, contact time, um, stiffness, and, and things like this. Thank you, Pascal. Yes, as I say, um, with this device, we can see a lot of parameters that help us to understand how you, how you, how you run. And um, uh, what's important is to know uh, your goal and if you want to improve, for example, it's, it's, uh, it's needed to progress with your contact time. The more your contact time uh, is is low, the better you will run. So that's important to know um, on, on your habits, what is your, for example, your contact time, your flight time, your cadence, your strike foot, are you putting your, your, your heel on the ground first, or maybe are you putting your forefoot first, are you running with, with a foot a bit like this, like a pronation, a supination, or maybe a pronation and thing like this. That's how we use uh, the devices to have more scientifically and uh, quantitative uh, parameters. And then we will use with the movement uh, that you do before, we will understand what are your natural preferences of running. And as, as I said before, there are different style of running and no one is better. But um, we will see that someone will um, running like you see some 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 runners that like are going like up. You you think that they are just bouncing like a ball and going really up. And you see other that they are like a truck and going really forward. <laughs> so I will I will. Uh, we will do a small exercise to just feel a bit what I'm say saying. So stand up. I'll do it with you. Yeah. I'll put the chair. Okay. And uh, behind your <laughs> behind your oh, the screen, you can also do with again. Perfect. So you experience this one position, and now you will experience the other. All right. Okay. Like so. This and be really. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what do you feel? 
Uh, I feel which muscle? Which muscles? Yeah, yeah. My quads. Yes, a lot. Uh, a little bit of my glutes. Okay. Mostly my quads. Yeah. Quads. And if I uh, contract my arms, I feel better. Okay. <laughs> yes. Perfect. So you feel two different um, kind of muscle working. Okay. So. And this is part of the analysis. Then. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So in one running style, if all right, exact. If in one running style, you will use mostly um, the you will use mostly the muscle on your back, and in one running style, you will mostly use your running uh, your muscle on the front. And when when you're running, um, you activate. Okay, you also activate your your quads. That's no problem. But you prefer to use one one chain instead of another. So they are runners that go forward like a truck. They prefer to use uh, muscle on the interior chain, and the other one that are just bouncing like a ball, a tennis ball. They prefer to use muscle on the back to to extend themselves. The other prefer to be a bit more um, in flexion, like they use mostly uh, their quad. So seeing what muscles I activate is giving you an idea of what I... No, that was just for you to feel. Oh, okay. um, but seeing your running pattern, I can see which muscle you prefer to use. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. And this leads to... to no, ask a pin. Yes. And no problem. And this leads to um, a more stress on this structure. You know, if you prefer to use the chain on your back, the posterior chain, like with your calves, with your hamstring, and things like this, it will have uh, a bigger stress than in your, in your muscle in the anterior chain. And that is something that we need to know uh, to constrict your, your plan and your, and your strength plan and things like this. Because, um, because it's what you, what you love to use to run. So we need to, to take care of this. Mm -hmm. And um, if you don't know which, um, which natural preference, uh, preferences you want to use, you, you love to use, and maybe you, you read a magazine that say, oh, you need to run on your forefoot because it's, uh, it's efficient, it's something like this, and you are a person that you are not running uh, with, uh, with this running style, it can be a problem because you are stressing muscles that you don't like to stress and that you are not um, comfortable to, to use. So you, it can lead to, to, to injuries and things like this, but we will discuss it uh, after. So, yes. but uh, so as I said, there is no better um, running style. We, uh, each of them are, are great. Just, we just want to know which one are your running style. So in order to improve your performance, in order to reduce your injury risk, and in, in order to have the maximal uh, pleasure. Because yes, we are all running and we are all like suffering. <laughs> so we are in the same uh, situation. So as I said, uh, to know how you run, uh, are you more a terrestrial person, an aerial person? Are you more putting your heel on the ground, maybe your forefoot? It's, uh, it's important because uh, you can, with this, you can rightly sho uh, choose your shoes. So uh, not all runners are able to run with uh, thinner, thinner shoes or with um, thicker shoes or things like this. It's, it's important to know this because you can, it can lead to a lot of uh, injuries. Yes, it can lead like, um, to a lot of injuries. As I said, you can see uh, the a real uh, runner, runner is likely to have the injuries uh, at the calf because you, you you experience it that there is a lot of tension in your calf when you do the exercise on or on the foot because mm -hmm. there is a lot of pressure here and the terrestrial person can lead to have more injuries on the on the knee on the back on the hips 
because there are more stress on this. And if you are running like one of these two um, running style and you are not from this running style, it increases the risk of injury in this in this uh, uh, location of the car. So that's one of the points that it's in, important to know how you are running. And secondly, it's, um, if you know how you run, uh, you can train accordingly. Uh, it means that for an, a real person that is bouncing a lot, he will mostly prefer to run short distance, high interval training, uh, maybe on the track or thing like this, because it's for him it's efficient and it, he, he prefer because it's, it's shorter and it's easier for him because he's using like back muscle, the back chain muscle to do this. And the more terrestrial person will mostly prefer to do maybe trail or long distance or thing like this. You, you already told me that you were doing long run. I feel like I would be maybe the person who is meant to do shorter distances and is attempting to do a long distance. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe I'm counteracting. No, it, it doesn't mean that if you're a terrestrial person, you cannot go on the track and not do interval training. But it means that you need to be careful and to do slowly in this, in this um, training because you're not at the beginning comfortable with this. And if you go too, too faster in this training, um, in this training, you will you will mostly have an injury. Mm. So makes sense. And the same for a, for a real person. He, it doesn't mean that he cannot do trial, but he, 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 it means that he need to go carefully in this direction and just uh, put uh, some some rest in, in this training. And for the um, for the second part of the training is. Uh, is strength training uh, that it's really important in the in the running in the running and that we we missed a lot. But you said that you you you're doing some cross training. Yes, uh, so I do strength training. Yes, uh, but uh, it's definitely not tailored to run. I okay. just do what I know okay. as a general uh, strength training. But that's already something. But if you know how you run. Uh, you, you can spe specialize your, your strength training in this direction. It means that if you are more a terrestrial person, that you will maybe, uh, you will do a training that put you more in a flexion, in a flex position, that you will maybe use more your quads, your glutes, your back to be more, more flex, more on the ground and that you can uh, run like a truck. And if you are more in a, in a real person, you will do more strength training with maybe the calves, uh, bouncing training that you can it can allow you to go on the on the position. And uh, yes, and I I remember um, this guy Uke that is doing a lot of uh, uh, he's a trail man, a trail runner, and he came one day to me and he wanted to improve his performance and and we we built the strength training for for him and he was um, a really really good runner and he was a, a real runner that so he wanted to go very we he wanted to go up and he was doing a sport like a long trail you know, ultra ultra trail and that's that's endurance maximum that's heels down, heels down. And that's, if you're a real runner in this, uh, in this situation, you want to go like this for a long time and up the hill, and you are losing energy a lot. And so he was not in his comfortable situation. And, but he was running perfectly. He was comfortable when the race uh, was flat. And he, he came one day to me and he said, okay, Ellen, um, I want to improve my running, but when it came finally flat, I can, I'm not I'm not me anymore. I cannot run as as I as I know. I, I feel that I'm 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 not me, and I 
I asked myself, okay, how can I do this? He was in a terrestrial mode, like doing up and down hills. And then he cannot anymore go in his natural preferences like an unreal one. So I say, okay, maybe when it comes flat, try two exercises that, that improves your aerial side, like just rapid jumping on the calves during the race and try to see if it reactivates your aerial and your preference running. And he said, okay, I, I will try. And I was, okay, I, I, I want to be in the race and to see Rick doing his rapid jump. And he came after and he said, okay, that, that was amazing. I take 10 seconds to just reactivate my calves and doing some aerial things. And then in the flat, I can run as much as I can. As much as I can. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I'm curious how the competitors were watching him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope it, it helps a bit. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'm glad we are back online and uh, things seem to be working. Knock on wood, cross your fingers. Um, I have a lot of questions personally because uh, I'm, as you mentioned, uh, attempting to run my first marathon and uh, perhaps not doing it the way I should be. Um, that's best for my body. So um, we'll, we'll wait for those questions. I'm going to see if we have a few from, uh, from the chat. I can't see it on my screen, but I'm going to come a little closer. And uh, I'm going to start with Tatiana. How many times a week is recommended to run for an average 10K runner? So if you are yes, a recreational runner, uh, somebody who's not a professional. Um, I want to say three times a week is great. So one long run, one short run, and one interval running. Um, yeah, one three times of running per week and one times strength training. It's it's great, great. So hopefully for those of us that are more recreational, that will be a, a good structure. And Michael is asking, does it make a difference how the runner breathes? What is the best recommendation for breathing? Okay, um, there is no. Keep breathing. Is there <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, Don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's definitely the, the only recommendation I can give. It's keep breathing uh, and just don't think about breathing. Just breathe as much as you can, as normally as you can. There is uh, no other recommendation. Excellent. I, I think that's a solid advice. <laughs> um, I am looking now. Uh, I think somebody's asking what is the name of the device? So maybe the name of the program? Again, yeah. for, for the listeners, uh, we are using a device called GetUp. Okay. And that's the device that was strapped to the shoes. To exactly, the exactly. Great. Uh, let me just go in here. A question from Guy Orthotics. After gait analysis, how realistic is it for people to adapt their running style, or when are orthotics recommended? Uh, can you Okay. Um, or orthotetics, uh, like I think you mean source, is uh, recommended um, when you cannot activate your muscle enough to correct your running pattern. So I think my 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 thought about this is try try first to run without soles and activate your muscle in consequences and if you cannot act, um, run without and it creates injury that you cannot solve with activating muscle you, you can think about soles and like this but with our devices um, we cannot recommend uh, auto settings uh, settings for runners it's not uh, because it's more something on the foot that uh, it's needed in this case. Great. I have a question. I, I, I'm, I'm going to see if somebody from, from the audience here live has questions. Let me know. Um, I'll ask my own in the meantime. Uh, if somebody is, 
joining us from a different country where they won't be able to come see you in Lausanne, what are some of the things that they can do on their own to better understand how they run? Um, I think the better things they can do is not listening to other and not read some runner magazine and things like this and not try to change uh, their running technique. If they run and they don't have problems, that's fine. That's totally fine and they, they can just go, go run without changing something. If they want to improve, mm -hmm. uh, then it's difficult to, to, to do this by distance. But we can maybe work by video, things like this. Mm -hmm. But if it's in order to prevent injuries, the best things I can do is if you run and you don't have injuries, continue. Mm. It's perfectly okay. Is there any kind of a myth buster? So when I was told I was trying to run um, just as part of my cross training when I was an athlete, so my sport was fencing and running was very secondary. And they said, well, land on the middle of the foot or, you know, certain kind of instructions that maybe were not accurate. Is there any big myths or myth busters that you could tell us of common uh, wrong advice that people give in running? Yeah, that's that's one of them. <laughs> that's one of them. Uh, yeah, exactly. The, one, the most common um, myth buster is run on your forefoot or run, uh, everyone should run in the forefoot. That's more efficient, as you said. That's that's totally or never land on your heel. Exactly. Never land on your heel because it's bad is the opposite. Mm -hmm. And that's that's false. Okay. Because it's uh, very dangerous. Is it a different maybe old uh, style of coaching or thinking about running? Uh, is, it, is it evolving with time, you think? Yeah, I think it's evolving with time and with also shoes industry. Uh, it's involved like this and there are some we tried, I think, at the beginning to know how African are running because they are running without shoes and they are all landing on the forefoot and they are very good and things like this. But um, now it's a bit adaptive and we see that even African runners are running on the heel. Mm -hmm. So now it's, it's probably, I think, coaching needs to change. Now it's going to change. Okay, very interesting. And I have a question on paper from the audience. <laughs> and it's a question for the audience to win a prize with them. If they're in the sun, they are offering to the audience, to the community, one test with them at the moment. Ah, so this is a prize question. I'm glad you told me this because I would have said it the other way. So this is a prize question. The winner will uh, receive a prize from a movement. Am I correct? Excellent. So for anyone, uh, get ready to chat, get ready to type uh, your answers. And the question is, and I guess the answer was kind of in the slides as well. What type of injury does an aerial style runner is likely to experience? So what type of injury is an aerial style runner likely to experience? So let's see the answers that are coming in. Uh, this is for uh, I guess a trivia question for a prize with a movement. And the prize, uh, tell us again, what would the person get? The person will get uh, uh, the running analysis. The running, running analysis. Assessment. Excellent. So we'll see if somebody is, uh, I think we have our first answer. I'm just going to come a little closer to see. So Joe was the first one to answer calf and dorsal forefoot. Did I see? It's a tiny, tiny text on our screen, so we're all coming a little closer. Is that the correct answer? I, I need to... We have a little tiny screen in front of us. So I can see it here, calf and dorsal forefoot. Yes, Joe. Exactly. <laughs> okay, Joe is, a, is the winner. <laughs> Congratulations, Joe. Uh, so Maria is also riding calves, Achilles, plantar fa fascia. Oh, God, I don't know how to pronounce it. Probably. Yes. Potential stress fracture. So we've got some good answers. Joe was the first one to type it in. So Joe is the winner of, of the prize. So congratulations. <laughs> Excellent. I'll give the ball back. Um, so uh, I, I guess, is there any um, advice that you would give? You mentioned also the shoes. And I wanted to follow up with that question. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to look at time as well. This is going to be our last question for the webinar. but. Um, 
any practical advice for those people who are trying to figure it out uh, in terms of the right shoes to buy? Yeah, I think the main advice is to go to a professional seller and and try try shoes and not be afraid to to put shoes away if they are giving you some injuries or some problem. That's the best advice. That's always a big question for runners or recreational runners or wannabe runners. Any type of runner. Well, thank you so much. Thanks to everyone for your patience with our technical challenges. We figured it out in the end. Thanks for the questions and the participation. This was the first of the active series by Sportworks. Many more coming your way. Uh, once again, thank you, Ellen, and thank you, Emma Mom, for the expertise. And uh, wishing you all a great rest of the day, evening, whatever part of the world you're in. And uh, we'll connect soon again. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.